Well, increasingly, researchers are being required by their funders and also requested by their publishers to make the data available that underlie the results of research. And a lot of researchers are being proactive about moving into open science culture of reproducibility and make, um, making their research more transparent as they go. In the process of doing research, a wide range of data gets, uh, gets created. In, in my case, that is, a lot of that is sound data. That will be songs, that will be narratives, that will be uh, yeah, the results of controlled studies where you get little sound clips of, for example, a hundred from ten, uh, for, for ten speakers, so, so like a thousand in total, where, where you, I do acoustic analysis on. And while the project is ongoing, all of those research data, um, I, yeah, it's the, the key issue is making backups. But when a project is completed and it's, uh, the, the thing is to, to archive and to make the data publicly available. Uh, that, and I, I do that primarily through Edinburgh Data Share, which has yeah, a, a user-friendly uh, interface to, to upload data, data yourself. And that data then becomes available to, uh, to anybody. And uh, so, yeah, making it possible to, 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 to reach users that you can imagine and, and beyond, beyond what, you, what you, the people you're thinking of. When it comes to the sharing of data, it's depending on the nature of the output, there are very different stakeholders to whom it's relevant. So when it is a, a, a very much a, a scientific study, then I can make a data set available so that other linguists can do can use it to investigate language phenomena that I and, and answer research questions that I haven't thought of my, uh, myself at all and 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 that's very I find that very valuable but often it is quite surprising to whom the data is is relevant. The research focuses on the history of 19th and 20th century um, built environments um, including things like <coughs> history of conservation um, history of modern architecture, and then in particular history of mass housing, uh, where I'm currently working on a, a, a book which is kind of like an international overview study of, um, of, of mass housing. So far, I've taken probably about 60,000 pictures. So it's a question of how, how um, you know, whether th some of those could be made available just for people to use, because I'm not, you know, I'm not, don't feel sort of proprietorial about them. If people can use them, great, you know. One of the, just as an illustration of the um, potential immediacy that this, um, uh, that the data share setup can allow, because because it's um, um, the um, the images can be um, and the, t the the captions can be got through a Google search, um, which is not possible incidentally through our, our um, Heritage Lottery Fund um, the database. Um, the um, w the first um, um, city that we did was Madrid as a kind of trial run, and within like a few days, I got an email from a journalist on El Pais newspaper in Madrid saying, "Oh, you know, we've I've spotted pictures of this estate or that estate on the internet. Can you tell us why you you picked Madrid to do you know to put on this database?" And uh, you know, I was kind of a bit surprised because literally it had only been up for a few days, and somebody had already you know found it, um, you know, and uh, and not only had found the images from the um, individual estate, although they were obviously looking at, looking, had got into it via, but then had sort of come across the whole project, you know. So, you know, that, that um, I, I thought that was quite an endorsement of the idea that, you know, these, all the individual items can be pulled out by, by in Google searches. Most of all, researchers should do the work of preparing their data for archiving for their own good because they can, they can then use that data in the future without wondering, um, trying to remember uh, what they didn't document. Whereas if they do archive it properly, they'll have done the documentation procedure, they'll have thought about file formats, they'll make it accessible so that whatever institution they move to, they can just download it from the repository. First of all, we provide advice and support. You can go to our web pages. You can um, call into the IS helpline, and we'll have a meeting with you to talk about your specific data and how it should best be archived. 
in, within the university, we have two archiving options. Basically, one is open access and one is closed if the data is more sensitive or there's, there's some reason not to make it publicly available. But you can still make it findable and accessible by creating a metadata record that's discoverable to the world.